last time um, that we talked about was about um, on the things that would really recall to us about what is really important and with, with, with will guide us to our practice soon when you will become IO practitioners in the future. So uh, we talk about uh, code of ethics and ethical dilemmas that were existing uh, in the workforce. So we also did a bit of an introduction as well with IO psychology. So if you could recall um, what are the functions of IO, what's the difference between industrial aspect of the IO psychology on in the organizational aspect as well of the organizational psychology. So at this moment, at this time, okay, we will dig deeper onto the specific function of the industrial side of the psychology and that is training and development. So this evening we'll be talking about um, uh, the introduction of training and development. So what is it all about and why do we need to, uh, why do we need to learn about it okay so for those kanang who in the chat group no please let me know if someone will come para maad na sila simultaneously all right so let me just share my screen um okay so who was able to read the textbook or textbook rather the ebook rather or nakascan through lang sa manual sa um sa canvas who was able to uh, scroll about okay. it or run through yeah yes we can hear you ariel yes ariel okay thank you thank you for the feedback so yes, um, this is the, tra uh, the the this is the topic prof proper for training and development. So we'll talk about the things that we will be talking for the whole semester. So this will be our guide. So at the end of this kanang discussion, you'll be able to know what are the things that you'll be doing for the whole semester. Right. So welcome to our um, chapter one. So this is the introduction to employee training and development. So there are three. Uh, there are three objectives. Um, and if you notice, no, it's been highlighted. So it's been on the um, here on the underlined and the bold ones. So number one is we need um, we'll be discussing the forces that influences the workforce and learning and explain how training can help companies deal with these forces. Um, no matter how we try to uh, I know, um, deny that uh, we, we, uh, we choose psychology because we don't love math, we choose psychology because no, there is no accounting, we choose psychology as our course because there is no business, but at the end of it, there is a certain part of psychology that makes it like on the business side. So this is the business side of psychology. And um, in order for us to have a deeper understanding of how important training is to the to the workforce, we need to know what are the things that influences the workforce, for example. Right? So we'll be discussing that throughout the this evening. And second uh, objective for this is uh, you'll be able to know or a, f a figure or you need to explain what are or how training and development in formal learning and knowledge management contribute to business success. So training and development itself is just a part of the whole business success. So for those who are planning to build their business, and I know someone of you in this class uh, have been uh, already been to business. So yeah, you will now know how important or how crucial it is to have training, um, informal learning, and then it will contribute to the whole success of the business. And lastly, of course, discuss the various aspects of training design process. So we will run through to it. Where should we start? The middle and at the end. All right. So uh, this learning objective, really, the textbook. Um, just to give you a heads up, if you know, if you read the textbook, it's mostly from the Western textbook, 
uh, Western example. So if um, this is part of the uh, eBooks uh, learning objective, so we will not uh, focus on that. However, we will also focus on the other objectives, and these are the key roles of training professionals, the, the training and development officers, the IO psychologist, and of course, the last part is what are the resources that are needed in order for us to achieve our training goals. So, <clears throat> so right now, no, there is a vast changes with with what we are doing in our lives, be it with our study. So most of us are doing online classes. Some of you um, shared their sentiments that they do not want to be part of the academic year and they wish to to have an academic freeze yeah yeah that's also part of the changes of the situation now however um how how about on the business side on the job side on the career job or on the on the job aspect what are the changes that has been brought by this pandemic um by to the workers to the workforce so in other words uh Binisaya ba unsay epekto or influence sa uh, pandemic sa mga nanarbaho karon? Nag work from home, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, so and work then, from home. Then ay mga na lay off ang ubahan. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's one of the a uh, few examples, no, that um the changes brought by the COVID-19 pandemic. So there were changes with the medium of working and communicating. Oh shit, now I go. <sighs> Hello, uh, nawala ang ko an internet no katsya, sorry. The so na ibut ang kuan ba ang plug so na ibut tanan router. Apologies. <laughs> All right, so let's continue. Nakasod ba tanan? Is everyone on the screen? I mean, on the group, on the chat, in the meeting room, rather. Wala pa si Bina, sir. Okay. Yeah. So going back to the discussion, ganina. So there were things, no, that really affects us right now. That really influences the way we learn, the way we work, and the way we interact with people. So everything right now has been moved to the digital platform or digital format. Uh, can you hear me, Ra, clearly? Oh, okay, Raman, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thanks. Yeah. So if you notice here, um, in the PowerPoint presentation, there are three that have been um, like a factor that influences the workforce right now. We have the competitiveness, human resource management, and the stakeholders. So competitiveness, it's how uh, how the market right now is really um, applicable to a particular industry. So it's the ability to maintain and gain market share in the industry. So for example, um, we have here social media, social media accounts. So here in the Philippines, the number one social media account is Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, it's Facebook. But when you go to other countries around the world, uh, for example, in uh, in Asia, for example, in Thailand, Facebook is not that popular. Uh, it's popular, but it's not that 
um, more common compared to Instagram. So Instagram, there is their number one application. And um, what is the Twitter? So also we have Twitter and um, what is the famous message mes uh, messaging app there is a Philippines? Diba? It's it's still Messenger, right? Sakto ba ko? It's Messenger. Yes, sir. Mm -mm. Famous for... ghosting site, sir. <laughs> okay, but for the whole world, it's not Messenger, but it's WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Oh, yeah, it's WhatsApp. So majority of the people around the world connect to WhatsApp. Um, there are two ways, Mano. So the market share for the messaging app has been really um, kind of aligned to what kind of, um, what type of um, provider ang naa. So we have two providers man for smartphones. We have the iOS and the Android. So if you are an iOS, mostly you will have FaceTime and you have iMessage. But for Android around the world, so na may mga independent na mga messaging apps. And then it's not Messenger, it's not even Google Duo, but it's WhatsApp that has been used by I think majority of the people, especially sa Western part of the world or Western Western culture. <clears throat> And um, um, aside from the competitiveness, we have also human resource management. So that involves really the people or how do we manage the resources, the human resources inside an organization or inside a company. So these are referring to the policy systems um, that influences the behavior and attitude and performance. So for example, um, how do we um, um, put or how do we give uh, motive, how do we motivate our, and for example, atong company is BPO, how do we motivate our comp, uh, employ agents to become productive and to hit their metrics or their scores? So one way of doing that is putting incentives or um, monetary incentives. They put, uh, they give rewards. For example, if the agent can met no, the the scores or beyond expectations, so na ay monetaring a reward nga ihatag from the company. And same with, same goes with other um, companies depending on the nature and then also of the capacity of the organization on silang mahatag. Like, di sila mahatag po doon ka ng um, house and lot. Oh, depends, but I think multi-million companies can't afford to do that. Like, yeah. So there's a lot of policies no, and systems that have been doing. Um, I think with Google, um, if you be an employee with Google and then I think they will be giving a um, they will support the family of the if ever mamatay ang ilang employee ba until certain times so na siya yung bond ba between the uh, employee and the uh, employer so probably the employees would be more eager to, to stay with the company with the benefits and the incentives so it really depends but on how people and of course um, the the payroll ang sweldo very important um, because that's the basic motivation that why employees stick to a particular organization or employer it's with uh, in, um, it's with the pay how much is the pay and of course lastly if we we'll have the stakeholders um, in our example earlier the BPO industry what are the stakeholders of a BPO company it depends on the nature of the BPO so for example if the BPO is mostly on customer service yeah, their clients are on uh, their account for example was um, AT&T for example so AT&T in US it's like a it's like PLDT and Globe here in the Philippines so if the BPO company is doing that job, like for example, giving customer service, so it's like um, giving feedbacks and then giving uh, what we call this assistance to their customers. For example, with uh, AT&T, and then um, there are disputes with their, there are disputes with their, um, um, bills and then their connections was that that good so yeah we have that uh, services of the PPO and stakeholders here are referring to the customers customers we have also the the government itself and other organization that influences the overall um, overall productivity and overall performance of this company so 
right now uh, we are in the pandemic so we are in we are um, in COVID-19 so all of these um, three factors would really influence how we how we train and how we put in the lens but how do we conduct training at this time of pandemic when when everything is virtual so that's now the challenge uh, for for us for for everyone who are yeah who are who will be doing training since you'll be doing training in this class, so you'll be doing it virtually. So what, what are the things that you will encounter? So yeah, that's the three resources that we need to consider or factors when we do training. Next is we have, um, what are the key components of learning, training and training and development? So since we train, uh, we learn but i think it was defined on the call this on the module in canvas what are the differences between learning and training so training is mostly on the skill part of the person or in the individual while learning is really on the um, for example how we teach the person with a specific a uh, characteristic for example stress management stress management or we call it um how do we motivate employees to be perform better so there there are two characteristics here but we'll we'll not focus on that anymore so we'll just segue that the differences between training and development but we will just use it as one in this whole discussion to make our to make our um, lives easier right so learning here is really the, the acquiring of knowledge, skills, competencies, attitudes, and behaviors. And the human capital here is not only referring to the person, but also referring to the things that will be learned from that person. So we have here the knowledge, the skills, the creativity, and the motivation on delivering the services. Right? Um, in the... In learning, what do you think is the most important component? Listening, sir. Yeah, so you are you are referring to the characteristic of a person of more of a um, individual side so it's literally the listening and I think you are referring to the whole bigger picture and that is communication yeah because communication is also important a very interesting aspect in training and development because uh, um, without communication we cannot deliver training and development to our participants right All right so right now this is the figure um, this is the role, the business role of training and development. So I've been mentioning earlier that um, training development is really an aspect of the business side of psychology in doing things. So in this aspect, um, we have here the diagram. So the diagram here would tell us that um, um, our goal is to make, if we, when we do training, gusto maka, um uh, we can give the best to our employees right and when we have the best employees in the organization we can reach our goals in the company and that is to have depends on the um company but most likely and that is to increase the profit diba? to increase para mudaghan ang halin right so the theory here is that in order for us to achieve here on the diagram, let me just scribble this. In order for us to have this goal, kanang naka pink, our reach business goals, depending on the business, but for example, our business goal is to, um, to have a higher profit then we need to have learning and human capital right so we need to invest on the people we need to invest on um, our employees we need to empower them we give the, we need we need to give them knowledge that is why an habotangdiri is uh, before we reach the goal we need to have or emphasize human capital kanisang 
and I will put color yellow to it. So this is our goal here, this one, the yellow one. This is really our goal in this class. We need to flourish the human capital. We need to enhance them, right? And this is just part of the whole picture. The training and development is just part of the whole picture because if you notice, the two components belongs to a bigger picture, right? This one. So in order for us to capitalize human learning, these are the things that we need to do. This one, we need to give formal training, knowledge management, how do we, um, if they have existing knowledge, how do we do about it? And of course, we have informal learning. Um, it depends, there's a lot of informal learning. And part of it is what we call the corporate social responsibility. Kung sa school, para sa USP, ka na na itong outreach program, right? So learning is not just about the textbook or the discussions on the training, but it's also on the experiential ones, on the real life situation. So these are the things that really compose the business role of, the, of training development. So if you notice, it's in the core, it's very important. So far, how was it, everyone? Nakuhar um, ninyo? Or is it that challenging? Sabot at sir. Hi, great, thanks. Sabot lang. Sir. Thank you. Oh, by the way, we were able to hear background noises earlier. Kuha, guru na. All right, that's great, thanks. All right, let's move. Well, let me clear this. All right. Okay. So, so, yeah. So on the picture here, we'll try to discuss it. So training is what we call the the facilitating of learning, durability competencies. So it's giving knowledge and giving skills, or we try to change the behavior of the employees or the people in the organization. So we will just uh, we will just uh, for for the information of everyone, we'll just be using organization slash business on this discussion. But mostly, I will just use it as an organization. Okay, business. Okay, not all business are organization, man. But all organization, uh, not all organization are business. Business. Yeah, but not all business are organization uh, in a way. And yeah, development here is referring to mo mostly on the longer range or longer uh, how we look on the business side, like 10 years from now, what is our projection with our um, business or what's the projection of our uh, business 10 years from now. And that includes um, formal education. So we, we send our um, people, individuals, members of the organization to trainings outside the organization, for example, in a university or outside the country, we give them trainings, yeah, and we do also assessment. Informal training development is really the, the module making, so we, we follow a program, program, we follow courses, and also the events that have been developed um, by the company. So informal learning sa akong gishare ganina is referring to yeah katong mga experiential um, experiential um, learning like outside the organization so it's also learner initiated so the learners are the one who who reads or who hones the skills of his own and we have also here explicit knowledge from the word except explicit so it's a very visible kind of knowledge that's being transferred from person to person so for example, conversation or group discussion. So here we have here the uh, training design process. So how so the, the the goal now is we are done with the first part no with our learning objective. So we need to identify the the different um, factors that influences uh, training and development and the business side of training development. So right now, our second goal is to how to design effective training, how to make our, our training effective. So we need to follow a design process. So we have here the ISD model or the instructional system design. So we'll be following this one. 
So this is the systematic approach for development training programs. So um, this is based on the principles of instructional system design. So we have here the ADI model. So we have the analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. So it should be systematic and flexible to adapt to the business needs. So this is the model that you will be using the ADI. So we have the analysis, we have the design, so we have the development, implementation, and evaluation. So from this model itself, it will give you a idea what should be the process. So mod analysis, you're going to analyze the organization. Design, you're going to create, a you're going to create a program. Development, you need to um, tweak what are the materials needed for the training. And the implementation is you will be conducting the training itself. And lastly, you will evaluate whether the training was effective or not. So this is the step-by-step -step knowledge. So figure 1.2 is a training design process. So this is your first, I know, this is your first main task. But I have prior task to that. So this is the conducting of the needs assessment. This will be your midterm requirements, by the way, conducting needs assessment. The second is the, um, the you need to ensure the readiness of your... Uh, training, uh, readiness of your training, if the employees are ready or not. Third is uh, you will create a learning environment, uh, yeah, the materials, uh, you will practice if the trainers or the facilitators are ready or equipped with the training. And of course, you next is you need to transfer the learning. Next, it will be the uh, developing of an evaluation plan. Next, it would be the selection of the um, training method but mostly it will be digital or electronic because we are in pandemic. And lastly, you will evaluate whether your training was effective or not. So yeah, that's the whole process of training. So muna yung buhat, muna tong button for the whole semester. Any reaction so far from, from the group, from the class? Lara? Uh, I just said, uh, Juvi, wow, from the chat box. Yeah, so here, um, ISD model or the ADI model is not that perfect. It has its own uh, flaws. And if you notice, um, doing it like religiously, like following it step by step is nearly impossible because there's a lot of factors, uh, whether we can do a training effectively or not. So it, it is just a model, but it will not guarantee that it will be followed step by step by the practitioners. A um, uh, step by step process is really followed in re in real situations. It's, it's like um, expectations versus reality. So the expectations are like this. However, the reality is that we're not able to follow it step by step. So the flaw, major flaw of this model is the immediate to assumption that training is the best solution, where in fact it's not, it's just one component. Right, there could be other things that um, influences a, for example, motivation of a of a employee. Anong gamay man sila o performance? Why are they not performing well? So it's not we need we don't need to train them because they lack skill. But however, it could also mean that there were possibly um, administration issues, like there are issues with the higher operations, like if you're talking about BP or call center companies. For example, mismanagement of the resources or well, like, claro, a camaraderie. So there's a lot of things going on. So here, these are the forces influencing working and learning. So these are the things that um, would really um, influence us no, to what are the things that um, would really affect how we train and how we conduct uh, training to the people in an organization. And someone from the team would like to uh, probably share or kind of have their insight. So among all of the forces here, um, what do you think is the most influential? And what do you think is the least influential? <clears throat> Any ideas from the from the group? Or do you want to have a breakout rooms just so how we did last time?
Okay, so that silence means yes, so we'll do breakout rooms. So I feel that you wanted to do sharing man, so yeah, we'll do breakout rooms. So how many are you in this group? You are all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, four, six. Two, four, six, twelve. Thirteen. Okay, so I'll divide you into All right. So I will go to your room. So please, I will give you the topic and to try to discuss what are the things that you think are. So on the breakout rooms, you will discuss um, what are the things that are the most influential. Or what are the thing, or what are the factors that really um, influences the workforce, working and learning, and then you will also discuss what are the least uh, factors. You could you could just choose one. So, for example, in each group, you can choose one factor that you think is has the strongest influence, and why you why you decide to choose that, and also choose the least, pinaka least na fact na forces, and then also you try to uh, reason ngano ingon anak siya, right? So I will I will go to your rooms one by one and just be telling, yeah, All right? Okay. Okay, sir. Right. So you mean you'll go now go to your respective rooms. So there are four rooms here. Wala pa. Hello. Hello, Hi, sir. sir. Pwede, ano, if flash to ni Mo, wala ko kawa ng copy. So, sure, ako lang i-broadcast. Sige, sir. At balik ko sa main, uh, sa room. Okay. Sige, sir. Sige, sige, sir. Wait, how do I get, get out? <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Did I gawas, sir? No, gawas. Um... <laughs> Uh -huh. Ah, here, leave room. Leave breakout room.
talent management. Hi, group four. Hi, sir. Are you done na? Wala mo? Wala pa, sir. Nag-finalize na lang. Ah, sige, sige. So, I'll, I'll be back with you. Mata sa clay rooms. Thank, Thank you. Sige, sir. Hi, group. Hello, group three. Hi, sir. Hi, sir. Uh, Manam mo? Manam mo sa inyo ang discussion? Wala pa, sir. Wala, wala pa mi sa kanang list nga forces. Ah, uh, okay. That's fine. Force. Mubalik lang ko dere and then I'll visit you again. Okay, okay sir. All right. <clears throat> changing demographics and diversity of the workforce because maybe it doesn't matter if <laughs> I was group two. How are you now? Okay na mo? Muna mo? Natiuro ko. Asa mga part na Christod? Kaning list, sir. <laughs> ah, okay. Pero muna mo sa katong most influential Oh, we're not the most influential. All right, that's fine. I uh, just continue. I'll, I'll be back lang with you, right? Okay. Okay. Hello, group one. Okay, na mo, mana mo? Mana <laughs> oh, sige. I just be calling back na lang everyone. Wala catch up sa tanan, sir. <laughs> I took it. 
try. Okay, thank you. Oh, Marianne is here. Yes. All right. Okay. Hey. Hi, sister. Hello. Man. All right, is everyone here now? Oh my god. Are I still waiting for others? All right. So let's start with group number four. I think group number four would like to share first. Four. Kita four, Ibajas. Yeah, I think. Either, I'm more, just give us like short lang. Uh, why you choose this? Um. Force niya ang least niya ano ya. So for group four, you just choose. Mm -mm. Yes. Wala mo si Just Perder. Wala siya. So uh, wait, mo sa pwede ko siya. Yeah, sure. Um, how about other group lang sa? How about group one? Ready na group one? Kami ba na sir? Kamo Maria. Okay. Kita. Okay, Marianne, go. <laughs> okay, so the least influential for us is the economic cycle because not every country has the same wants and needs and it, it has different rates, total employment, and consumer spending. And our most influential one is the customer service and quality emphasis because it's a direct approach from the clients and I think it's the most vital one in order to make better strategies and develop it in the future. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Thank you, group one. Let's proceed to group number two. How about for group number two? Hey, group two. I think Kamu Jove, yeah, group number two. <laughs> Hello. Kisa taong ka umban? Hey. Okay. So for the most influential, you go, Galo. Oh. For us, sorry, most influential mo kay ang talent management. Mm -hmm. Because the um, purpose of talent management is to create motivated workforce that will stay in company in the long run. Mm -hmm. If you have a talent management, sir, bati mo dili kayo productive ang company. Yeah, it's true. How about for the least? Ang among least sir kay koan kaning new technology. Although this is important in the workforce kay considering that we are all digital kanang karon nga panahon, but for me kay Muni siya yung pinaka-list nga, pinaka-last nga, i-discuss nga, unsa itong i-acquire nga new tools, unsa itong i-acquire nga new um, mga websites or software nga gamiton kay prior to the, ay, kanang humana, humana ang katong mga, katong mga, kanang mga intangible assets sa human capital. So, pinang, 
ang pinakalas nga i-focus na dahil kay kaning mga mga new technology guys. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you group 2. And let's go go to group 3. How about for group 3? You say three. Kami is three, sir. Kamo, June and um, si Mung Paris, si kung ano? Um, si Evangelista, sir. Mm, yes. Um, amo ang amo ang great great ba or most influential forces sa working and learning, sir. Kaya we've decided kay ang increased value placed on intangible assets and human capital. Because we believe that if if ekanamurag among view is from the employer perspective, if increased ang ang value placed sa human capital, especially with kanang taas ang ang muabit ang care sa ilaha as well as their well-being, kay mo apekto na siya sa whole process or whole business process ba? And amo ang pinaka least kay and customer service and quality emphasis because because of amo ang gi prioritize ang human capital which is the well-being of the our employees mm -hmm. kay mo ad mo proceed na siya dito sa ilahang performance towards um handling customers so from the employer perspective mas gi hatagan na mag import important ang ang mga kas ah, ang mga employees kay sila man ang direct mo handle sa mga customers. Mm -hmm. Just ang pinaka-least concern. Mura yeah. to, sir. Thank you, group 3, Jude and Evangelista. So let's move to the last group, and I think it's number 4. Yes. Asan, Miss Jasper. Nakamute po man yung microphone, I think. mute <laughs> Sorry. Uh, ko answer. Ang among napili nga forces nga with great influencer kay kaning focus on link to business strategy kay syempre ga-evolve man ang ko answer. Like, every generation kay mag-evolve ba ang para maka-attract -at og kanang <coughs> atrak ang ubo des ina mo sa tubig ay eh. <laughs> maka atrak ang ubo des ay 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 Yes, we can hear you. There. Oh. Yes, sir. Kanang sa business strategy niya yung pasabot, sir. Kay kanang, kanang mag-usab-usab daw ang strategy based sa company. Then, muna ang kinanglan niya sa high performance kay dapat kanang versatile ang mga agent or something, sir. Yeah, sa, sa list na mo ang nagipili kay kanang talent management kay I think nga mas better if skillful ang mga agent kaysa sa mga sa talented okay yeah thank you thank you for the sharing so if you notice you have different um perspectives in viewing a particular situation so in this context kay what are the forces that really influences the workforce and learning and basing sa inyo hang different discussions ganina and you have shared different lenses because you have different backgrounds you have different um possible philosophies but that what is really important and what what are the things that is least important so it really goes back to the to the people who are doing it but on a more uh, objective and in a more um business side of psychology and training to be specific these factors have its own Kanang, wala just like, wala just like kanang, kung ano, um, universal that is very influential or least influential because these factors are tangible. They are volatile. They are changing from time to time. Especially karun, they are, they, that, to, to, uh, tonight. This year 
has been very challenging because of the pandemic. So some factors here might be least last year, but now it might be very important. So right now, for example, technology. So before, um, like very, kind of very noticeable in USP. So before there's a lot of students who are not really into Canvas and same with teachers, they are not really comfortable using Canvas, but right now they don't have a choice because all of the learning or all of the medium of instruction should be done virtually. So don't have any choice. So na usab na shift ang changes. So um to the first um economic cycles is the first topic, no? So it's really um economic cycle. So um that's really how how a particular country bitaw um really has its own um, ups and downs when it turns with its economy. So of course, you're familiar with global cri global crisis in terms of financial crisis. I think you, the most recent one is katong nag US katong katong ni fall tanan stocks katong nag uh, na close tanan banks. Okay, I think one of the reason of it was um, uh, uh, credit sa mga Americans kita as kaayo so wala nay pambayad sa bank and then karon i think most of the economies nga affected sa covid and pandemic are really on to still um padong ko siya guba ba ilang kuan ilang economic cycles and same with the philippines as well and with offshoring this is really how or because of globalization so there are no more borders no this is the second factor there are no more borders like we live in a world where where there are no more boundaries, so everything has been very connected with the internet and with with the emerging of cultural exchanges, but from different countries across countries. So we have now what we call offshoring. So very familiar those who've been working in the BPO industry. You no, know, most of the clients are not from the Philippines, but from the overseas, from the US, from the Australia, or other clients who talk or speaks English. So they offshore their services here in the Philippines because they believe that it's more, it's cheaper to cost mas gamay ang sweldo as compared when they hire customer service representatives on their own country or in US. Same with app, same with services. Like for example, um, if you're familiar, um, most of the Apple products are not, um, they are manufactured in in outside the US, so it's in China because well, China has the lowest cost of manpower, like assemble ba. But all of the things have been developed in yeah, in US. That's how offshoring goes work. So assets, so when we talk about assets, uh, it's the it's these things are not things that gives maka give advantage to a particular organization. So these are on the slides here. These are the assets that an organization can have. So we have the human capital asset, we have the customer capital asset, social capital asset, and the intellectual capital assets. So human capital, that's the, the person itself. Um, the workers are capital, they are assets because sila may mag work, sila man mag hatag og revenue, sila mag hatag og profit sa organization. Customer capital, this is how we relate to our customers. Social capital, how is what is the particular culture of a company? And lastly, the intellectual property rights, so mga patents, like what's unique on that company, ng ilahara jut na dilipo di mashir sa urban organization. And we have here. Uh, so these are the capitals, the human capital, customer service. Yeah. Another uh, very important role, no, another um, factor that really influences the workforce in training right now is the diversity of the workforce. So um, we live in a world wherein there are more people that so um, because of the advances of medicine and technology, more, pe more people are living longer as compared 20 or 50 years ago. So we are having a lot of workers who are on still working. So the retired age, I think it's 65 or 60. Ba? So we can still um, have co-workers who are way, way beyond 50 years old or almost 60, they are still part of the workforce. And on the video that was, that I sent some module, I think on the introduction to high psychology, like the video of Japan, like Japan has this very intense work, work um, culture. And then uh, since Japan is also an aging population, there are studies 
um, said that at the 2030 or 50 years from now, majority of the people in Japan are the older people na. If they let change nila ilahang crisis or ilang trend sa ilahang marriage o sa ilahang reproduction dito sa Japan. So yeah, so here um, we have yeah diversity in terms of sexuality, gender, um, ethnic diversity there's a lot of people and here in the philippines in the asean integration so this that, that means that we can go to school with the same asean countries we can go to job we can apply you can apply as an hr practitioner outside the philippines just like here in the philippines more same same but because of the asean integration so there is very di big diversity in the workplace so there's a lot of things that so these are the how do we manage um, diversity in the workforce so these are the factors or steps talent management very important how do we know if um, if our um, employees or the people in the organization is fit or in the right um, position for that specific job do we transfer them? Do we do we make lateral transfer? For example, um, for B, for example, if Sia Ang operations manager, do we need to transfer him into a um, training assistant or training manager because he has that skill as a trainer and not of a manager? Or do we need to promote a person from being a supervisor to a site manager or operations manager? Or do we demote a person so demoto is the opposite of promotion. Since poor performance man ang, ang manager, do we put him into a supervisory role? So that depends. Depends on a lot of uh, factors in that involves skills, uh, compensation, tagan ka ayun. Naadri sa nansa slides ang mga factors. So if you could just run through with it, of course. And you've mentioned kanina that we have the quality control or the QA, quality assurance and customer service. So uh, we have here the total quality management, so it is a um, like an idea between how we evaluate the organization as a whole. What are the quality controls in terms of customer service, in terms of the delivery of the particular services? Is it effective? Is it diliba siya makalugi sa company? Is it worth it? So they uh, they follow this certain type of quality management. So total TQM or total quality management. So just bear with this kwaano technical details. They are very business oriented nga koan nga terms. So it, it might be challenging on your end um learning these concepts because um we did not have or discuss this in your previous subjects, that the business aspect of psychology. So of course we have um, from we have quality standards in the Philippines. We have ISO, and we are you familiar with Six Sigma process of managers and trainers? Wala mo na ani or have you heard katong nagwork sa BPO? Like your trainer is or manager is a Six Sigma belter. So it's like um it's like like karate no na nasa mga belt belt yellow niya ang highest kay black so if you are on the black level of six sigma meaning you have attained this specific qualification of being a manager or trainer so it's the highest level and then the i think the basic one is the yellow or white yeah so my level level put say so it's six six processes so we have here iso and of course, technology. Um, yeah, technology would really influence um, our our job, our job. So imagine um, 50 years from now, what would training look like? So imagine um, there will be robots already. There will be AI. There is already an AI, but not that advanced, but we are going to it because of the development of 5G. With 5G, um, AI can work um, in a more efficient way, must optimize ang, ang, ang AI with, with faster connection with the internet. So imagine, um, we. it could mean that our training itself, um, there we, will be a possibility nga mawala na ta as trainer because there is already an AI or robot that can do our task and an economic or business side they are more efficient because they don't need the masakapoyon ng robots unlike people like us right so will technology kill this industry of training and development 
what's your answer? Put your answers. Let me know your thoughts on the chat box. What do you think? So three questions, sir? Yes, sir. It may affect. Will AI kill this job, like this industry of training and development, or not? So uh, yeah, artificial intelligence is uh, you're referring to kanang kuan ba na siya kagaling on the brain. So for example, we have Google Assistant, we have we have Siri, yeah. Well, we have chats. Mixed, okay. Jovi mixed case to case basis. Totally agree on this matter because dili mangud tanan as of now dili mar replace tanan pod sa AI ang human to accept. Yeah, that's a very good. It's a very good topic, no? I mean, we can put, I can put quite a long discussion on Canvas and you can put your answers. Para mas, yeah. Great. So, yeah, we have here high performance model of work. So, work teams and cross training. So, it's a working team doing uh, the same training here. Virtual virtual teams. So what we're doing now is a form of virtual team. So you'll be cho choosing your partners to conduct the training and development. So it will be a virtual team. So I will not put discuss this because this is from the US data. So who is in charge, by the way, of um, training and development? So the in the Philippines, the in charge of training and development are the uh, professionals working in the human resource, especially. So they have, um, depending on the context of the company. So if dako kayo ang ang organization, for example, in the BPO. So a very perfect example kayo ang BPO. Okay, it's a very big company, no? So they have distinct um, characteristics. So for example, when you go to training, sa BPO, they have a, a specific training department. So we call it some of the um, they call it learning um, department, training and learning department. So that's how they train people to become customer service representatives or agents. In some organizations, would, um, they have smaller people. So they, um, they house the training officer or learning or training specialist um, under a put HR human resource. Right? In a nutshell, Training and development is not that easy. It has several and distinct and broad topics that need to be familiarized as a future IO psychologist. So what we have tackled so far, so on the first slide, know the key components of learning development. So what are the forces that influences business? And um, how, why do we need to, to conduct training? And that is to have higher profit, higher goals of companies and outside the diagram there are forces that will let us help us guide on how do we put training in development of course we also discuss how to design an effective training katong ASI model so get on ASI model you can recall that and of course um, the forces that influences working and learning during the breakout rooms you can discuss and lastly uh, the snapshots of training practices so who conducts the training it's really training or IO psychologist. Thank you. All right, so we're done. No overtime, no? Oh, oh, 30 minutes. How was the discussion so far? How, how did you find it? Nice or interesting. Mm, okay, thanks, June. Informative, sir. Very informative. Um, for uh, this question is for everyone. Have you tried them? But like, like having a like knowledge lang or just reading like um uh, business side of psychology or wala pa jud. Haven't tried. Because scan scan sir, kaning ka Wiley Blackwell. Mm -hmm. Blackwell. Yeah, Blackwell, yeah. That's that's a very good manual, but it's the more advanced na siya nga textbook. So that's how they conduct the 
training step by step niya mga insights ba so that's a very good textbook na ebook po katong kang Wiley but katong kang know it's more on the pang undergraduate siya nga level ba so it's like on say so do ana na mga work kanang activity sa last chapter so it's more on the beginners aspect so katong si Wiley kay medyo advanced na to siya but if yeah that's also good nga you were able to read but baka it would give you an idea right uh, by the way na na may grupo sa inyo hang kuan sa inyong call this sa inyong company okay i'll be giving after this i'll be posting something sa canvas and probably make an announcement pa on the here i'm just looking on the sticky notes no Okay. So for everyone um after um attending the the synchronous online class what what were the your and more bit of lessons or more um insights or mga na realize yung kagalingon it could be related to the topic if possible but if outside like more on a personal level po there aside personal level of understanding um IO psychology or training and development and personal experiences or uh what, what am i too fast do you want me to repeat the question ang pangutan na kay kanang ko ay um can you share or would you like to share ba ana bitong murag at like i assume ang you don't have a background with training and development Truly, I O psychology. So, what were the kind of moments, but that you you had this realization about yourself or insights from the topic, or it could be insights from yourself within your personal self. Sir, liso de na yung kurso. Liso dia a sky. Oh, yes, sir. Liso dia. Pero in a way nga challenging si sir. Mm-hmm. Like, ang pagtour mo nila sa psychology sa una good nga. Kanang kurso lang nga, why math or something in ano sir? Sa iyo. Yeah, as yeah. we move forward nga, fourth year na meron sir. Challenging ni sir. Yeah, dagan na may options nga mabuhat. Yeah. So, I think it's, I had the same idea when I was still on your shoes, no? When I was still a student. But like, but katong time kikisa kita mo teacher sa training ay eh. nila ko mention but it i just had this realization after na jud but when i really studied the the topic of training development and it psychology just, i totally agree that psychology is not just about mental health it's not it's not just about um abnormal psychology diagnosis but it has its own broad aspect jud like business psychology io psychology nga mukha na ug mga it's it's really the business type of person so murag ari mag overarch ang ang business like kanong na mga BSBA nga mga courses ba and then here in psychology so ara siya murag mag meet halfway so yeah, kind of it's really psychology is uh, mura siya ganang it's a very broad subject nga when you graduate kay you will be having dilemma what to choose what to choose but what profession or what field are you going to choose when you graduate so that's that's the dilemma i think you know, from my personal standpoint with with a lot of choices given like when you were studying psychology na and i abnormal psychology too so you are trained to become a psychologist clinical psychologist uh you also discussing um social psychology and culture so you've been talking about stigma discrimination the self social self so you tend to become a social psychologist and then you have also io psychologist which is dagan o quarta so you are torn again so when you graduate with all of these options given to you kanang the dilemma ba sa kadagan nga choices kay wa kay mapilian so it's it's like it's like a parallax an irony in life ba sa kadagan choices sa tao wa siya mapili kung asa jud siya padung So yeah, that's modding wago pili yah sir. <laughs> okay, thank you, Arino, for sharing that. Yes, Jovi, anything to share about karon sa karon nga discussion?
All right. I find IO psychology interesting given that I've been in the BPO industry and that I can now relate to relate to, sana to, to the trainings I have went through with the companies I've been with. It's nice, but the slides is kind of fast and I cannot digest it right. Maybe I will reread it na lang. Oh, yeah. Because I was also, kung po nagdali po ko sa time, okay, we started late and then we already over, nag over time na po taba. So, yeah. Anyways, it can be digested. This is recorded, so I upload this on the YouTube chat, my YouTube channel. So, don't forget to visit my channel, click like and subscribe. And also, I will also upload this in Canva. So, all of the notes and PowerPoints modules part per part is na put sa Canva. So, you can really go back to it. So, this is the advantage of flexible online, okay? With the recorded and you can just rerun of things. All right. Anyone else before we end this session? Anything that wanted to share? Wala na? Ako, sir, kay challenging. Yes, I think it's interesting kay... It's challenging, sir, kay... Di ba, dahan mga technical words about business. So, mm -hmm. for, uh, first time, so, mga challenging sa... But yet, interesting also kay ginahulan. I am not expecting, no, na... We'll discuss nila ita about mga business, mga inana, kanya, di ba, man po, business minded. <laughs> so, it's also informative for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It must be very challenging sa kasagaran nyo kay you don't expect but that psychology has this business aspect without talking about uh, yes. assets, talking about um business um strategies and we'll be talking more on that, no business goals, mission vision goals on the next topic in that is the topic is how do we strat how do we create a strategic training and development so there are specific steps so we will take it slowly but surely all right anyone else that wanted to share or wala na so that we can end and probably katong wala pa ni hapon you can eat your dinner and sa katong mo rest na so so that i can also finish my rest day here i can but yeah Thank you, sir. All right. So I think that will be all for now. And um, um your reminders for everyone day kanang katong mga kuan ba. Um, I think I posted na put sa canvas. You can just um submit it even if it's late. Okay, kuan ba aron flexible ang uh, submissions ba. But yeah, just ayala new thing ba. Please do not kay bitang mag um stop na eh, mag procrastinate. I mean, it's natural my reaction no, from a person, but please make sure to prioritize things. Kay ang mahitabo man if dilit nyo sugdan kay magtipon og tanan niya inig deadlines kay mag magabot tanan inyong buhaton baso bas hindi mo makaapas. But if you believe that you can do it, makaapas so then yeah, you have also one year to comply rapod with the INCs if in case my IN, well, INC, IN, IN, IN whatever, IN4, IN3, whatever. So you have a year to comply. So yeah, just snow lang. All right. Um, do you have any questions before we end? Well, not necessary. All right. I see. Thank you, Kayu, for your time, everyone. And have a great night ahead. Yes, Enjoy your Thank night. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone, Thank you, for your time. Sir. And yeah, Thank you, you sir. All right. We'll bye. miss you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I chat to ko anala ko sa chat online na jud. Taong team bahay, so yeah, I'm just here. Okay, sir, bye. Alright, bye bye everyone. Have a great bye night, sir. Bye, sir. Bye.